Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video for me, Alan's Inventions. And on today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys this 3D printed arcade that I made. Uh, 3D printed because the whole enclosure is 3D printed. The rest of the components are basically one of my old videos from the shoebox arcade that I've taken and put into this nice looking enclosure. So let's get started with the enclosure. I'll give you guys a quick overview and then I will show you guys how I actually built this thing step by step. Alright guys, before I get into the assembly of the arcade and showing you guys all the panels, I want to give a quick overview of all the major components and how they're connected together as far as the electronics go. So I'm going to do that here first, starting off with the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, this is a single board computer. I'm using the software called RetroPie, and that's going to be installed onto this 64 gigabyte uh, SD card. Next up is the screen. Um, there's a link down below. It's a touchscreen. I'm not sure if RetroPie uh, supports touchscreen, but we'll find out. I am using a couple of adapters here to give me the clearance needed um, to fit with the enclosure within the enclosure. So this one plugs in here, and then there's one more adapter that I'm currently using to film, but you will need one, um, and that's an HDMI female to female adapter, which is basically going to join this connection and that one together and then this just plugs into your Raspberry Pi. Then next up we have the button controller. Um, this came as a kit with the buttons and the joystick. The kit that I linked down below actually is for two sets of buttons, two joysticks, and two controllers. Um, it is also a little bit newer than mine. Mine's a few years old, it was gifted to me, so the button connection style is a little bit bulkier like this. The ones that I linked down below is just one cable with multiple strands connecting to the board so it'll make it much easier for you guys to cable manage four buttons start and select start being single player and select being the dual player next up is the power brick uh, it's a 30 watt brick it just has two usb type a outputs um, i'm going to be using this one for the raspberry pi 4 and then one of them for or the other one for the audio amplifier i'm going to be using this cable to hook that together so this is going to be connected to that and on the other end i have two cables just like this um, one's going to go to the raspberry pi and the other one is going to go to the audio amplifier and then last is the audio amplifier uh, this is a five watt audio amplifier um, you will have to solder your speakers left and right and then your input for the audio and then your power input for the power input i'm using one of these usb female uh, breakout boards and I'm just going to be soldering two jumper wires from ground to ground and um, voltage to voltage keeps everything sort of modular but yeah that's it for all the components uh, let me show you guys all the enclosure parts all right so the enclosure um, this whole thing was printed on an ender 3 um, which maybe wasn't the best idea but it's what I have and I made it work so let's get started. This prints as one whole piece. It's about a 24 hour print. So it has all the cutouts for your two front buttons, start, select, and then for your four buttons, A, B, X, Y, and then finally your joystick here. As you can see, I put in a small recess for the joystick to be a little bit flush, and then all your buttons just drop in or, you know, you push them in and bam, and then you simply install your button on here. These at least twist in, so in, and twist and then it's locked in well I don't know if I'm gonna share the STLs to be honest with you guys I might just sell them as kits this took me a lot a lot of time to do I've actually been working on this since like late September early October but I had a lot of things come up just family stuff and then just work stuff that I didn't have much time to spend on this um, so let me know what you guys think if I should sell the STLs or should sell kits um, and if you're interested in building one of these or not um, next up, we have the uh, screen or LCD holder. So this one, your screen simply mounts in here, and then it has holes for the four mounting uh, mounting screws. And then for the speakers, um, here we go. I initially designed the whole thing in Tinkercad um, because it's free. Um, and it still has to be polished a little bit, but 
for now it works and yeah these are for gluing the side panels in here next up we have the left panel you see these grooves i'm actually going to be using a piece of a quarter inch plywood for the back and bottom it just didn't make sense to 3d print this so that'll slide in like that and then there's going to be another one that goes in just like that and then the right panel uh, same thing except this is for the power connector that i've been showing you guys so this will go through there for the audio amplifier you just gotta make sure to take the washer and nut off this one will just simply fall right in there and then last but not least well i'll keep this here i have this top cover so this one well see how it's kind of slanted on one edge that's just for the clearance of the screen so that'll fit into there i'll glue this here and then it'll kind of be the top cover of the arcade like that all right guys so i did do this portion off screen only because it would be easier so what i did was i assembled the back portion of the arcade together uh, this part is not glued yet so right now you see all my clamps on here that's to get the lcd mount panel the top cover and the two side panels glued together so while this cures i'm gonna go play something on my ps5 until then you know just kidding you don't have to wait through the magic of youtube here we go i wasn't gonna leave you guys waiting actually while that dries i just want to show you guys how much work goes into these videos especially doing something 3d printed here's pretty much all my failures up to that point um a failed 3d prints failed misalignments everything at one point i was going with this blue filament you can see everything was going to be screwed down but then i didn't like it the speakers were going to be on top and then next up was going to be different panels for the front sides and then these little small panels on the side which i didn't like either so here's kind of some of the progression of the design of this arcade um, for those of you that are not following me on Instagram, I've actually been posting previews since back in like October of this year. Um, but like I said earlier, it's just been a lot of things coming up and um, haven't really spent as much time as I'd like on these uh, on these projects. So hopefully now you guys are motivated a little bit to give me a like down below, subscribe, comment. And yeah, I would appreciate that. Thank you very much. All right, so back to the build. So after letting it cure overnight with the glue, uh, it's time to take off these clamps. So hopefully the whole thing just doesn't fall apart on me. There's the first one. If you guys build one of these, you kind of see how I put the clamps on. Should help you guys out. Um, there, I'm sure there's a better, smarter way to do that, but I'm not the smartest guy to do that. So that's the best I could do, and it worked. There we go. One solid piece now. Feels pretty sturdy, right? And let's make sure that it fits. That should slide right in there. And it doesn't fit. Nice. Just kidding. Yes, it does. I'll just have to put a clamp on there when I glue it. And before I start assembling, it's time to cut the back and bottom panels. All right, so it's time to cut the first panel for this is for the bottom. So the dimensions are 11 and three quarters by eight and a quarter. So let me cut these out real quick and hope it fits. Yes, I'm sure there's better ways to cut this, but I don't usually cut things on my channel until now. So new things, all right? I usually don't get excited over my own videos this much, but I can't believe I got it on the first try. Look at this bad camera work. Look at this. Look at this. It all fit in one go. Look at that. Perfectly slid in there. Nice and flush on the back. Now let me just cut the back panel and we'll continue the assembly process. All right, moment of truth. This one should slide right in because it's gonna be the access panel for all the controls. And like a glove okay so it's time to assemble the buttons green blue yellow red 
All right, so after installing the buttons, it's time to install a joystick. So you gotta take off the, the ball here and this little pad that it comes with. And I'm using two screwdrivers to actually tie in the, uh, the nut and the washer. One goes on the screw side, and then one goes on the bolt side, or nut side, sorry, with the washer. And then I just twist it up as tight as I can. And that's it for the joystick. There you go. And then you take your ball and this little spacer thing, which basically just covers up this hole and still allows it to move pretty well. And you slide that back in there, and then you screw this back on. Let me see if I can do this. There we go. That's installed there, and time to wire it up, wire it all up. Let's uh, install these, and these just slide in and click. When installing your buttons, you want to make sure you give yourself enough room to still be able to do that. As you can see, mine's twisting a little bit, so you'll probably need some pliers um, to hold it in place. But there's that button, and then let's do my start and select, which will be the one and two player buttons here. Well, those buttons are installed and it's raining outside. So hopefully my audio doesn't catch it, but if it does, well, Southern California, it's not supposed to rain here. Good thing it is though, we need it. it says every Californian ever. Make sure that's still connected and we have all our connections. So then you could cable manage this. Um, I am. Not on camera because that's boring so anyways joystick and like i said earlier or if i didn't doesn't matter which ones you plug into the retropie software will allow you to reprogram the uh, input should have a total of six so one two three four five i am missing one where is it Where's that lost connection? One, two, three, four, five, six. Three, four, five. Oh, there it is. So take that sixth one and plug it in there. Boom. It's all plugged in. Now I'm going to give it a quick power test. And they should power on. Let's see if you can see it on camera. Ready? Hey, there we go. Let me turn off the lights for you guys a little bit. They're on now. And let me show you guys the front buttons as well. Hey, there we go. Oh, I have a blinky one. It means the cable's loose. You see that? That's what I was talking about with those connections. But everything's working. Nothing's turning off when I hit the buttons. So let's keep going. Figure that short out offline. So here you can see the holes that I made to mount my uh, boards. Um, I'm going to put some electrical tape at the bottom of this just so it doesn't short even though it's wood. And then for the Raspberry Pi, I just drilled two random holes as well. And these will just line up with that and that'll get um i'll put a, a nut on the other side and then uh, screw all the way through and we should be good and this isn't going to short out because the raspberry pi has a spacer here so it gives it more than enough clearance off the uh, bottom of the board all right so the raspberry pi is mounted the usb controller is mounted next up it's time to put this off to the side a little bit and time to assemble all the components that go on this half of the arcade all right, so after making a few modifications here that you can see with a hot screwdriver and a lighter, the speakers are installed. Um, it's time to mount the amplifier into the enclosure. So this just bolts directly into the sidewall. It does go upside down. So you just pop that in right there and it fits into that groove. All you have to do is install the washer on the outside here. Next up is the power cable. So this slides in here. All right, so after a little offline magic, I was able to get the screen nice and installed. It's not perfect. I'll link something down below for you guys. But as you can see here, I did have to bend a USB cable a little bit just to get it to connect right there. You can see that. And that was the smallest one that I had that had the smallest connection. This is what I planned to use originally but this part was too long. So I'll a link an adapter just so you have another right angle, just like for the HDMI. Um, I did do some cable management, not the best, but that's it for this portion of it. It's time to merge the two together. So let's do that. All right, time to merge the two pieces together. So got to figure out what cables go where. So this is the screen, which should go on this side. And this is power to the Pi, so let's line up the two halves and try to connect them 
There we go. So far, so good. Oh, I should have connected the power to the Raspberry Pi so it doesn't stick out over here. And let me connect the screen as well. So that's going to go out through here and into the Raspberry Pi. So we'll pull that through. And then that connects right there. And that's it for that side. And then last, I'm going to connect the controller. So that just connects right here. And then it goes to the USB port. Come on, it comes from the back side. Yeah, that'll work easier. All right, so that just connects there. Um, that's what the inside kind of looks like at this point. Should be ready to turn on. You guys ready? Let's put the back panel on. And drop it right in. All right, so moment of truth. Is it going to turn on? Is it going to start the install process the first time? I haven't fully assembled it yet. This is the first time. So here we go. There goes the Raspberry Pi. Ready? Raspberry Pi is plugged in. Audio amplifier is plugged in and the buttons turned right on. Let's see what it does. And there's my install process. <laughs> Let's go. Shouldn't have done that, maybe. <laughs> Retro Pi, let's go. Just give it a few more minutes to go through the install process, emulation station, and we're ready to configure my gamepad. So let me give you guys a little bit better view. Hang on. I don't know if you guys can see on screen, but I'm at the initial button configuration. So let's do that. Left, right. Start, select, A, B, X, Y. And how do you do skip? <laughs> there you go, you just hold it. For my hotkey, I usually just use select again. So button nine and then, and there we go. And there's no ROMs or anything right now, but it works. It's alive. I'm not going to show you guys how to install ROMs. I'm sure with a diligent Google search, you can figure that part out on your own. There's plenty of resources out there. But that's it guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. And that's pretty much it.